it's me Nim Sony welcome back to another part of my tutorial series moving in unity and today we're going to be working with our character controllers which of course we discussed in the last video and we're going to be actually moving a character around now firstly we're going to need an actual character so what we're going to do here of course we want to remove our rigid body which was just for explanation we're going to remove the existing character controller we have and we're going to remove the cube that we started the whole game with what we want to do is have a new character which we're going to move around now the the pivot point of our character wants to be the base the actual absolute ground point of our character it just lets us work with uh, things a little bit better it's just something that i like to do anyway create an empty object i'm going to place it at zero 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 so it's here on the center point of our ground in fact i'm going to move this wall here over to where I sort of wanted it to be in the first place which was in front of the character instead of you know <laughs> to his left so now we can actually see where we're moving anyway so here's our game object that we've just added I'm going to rename it to player I like to use capital letters for our main object over here and within that we're going to have a nice mesh for the object for our character so we're going to add a cube of course the first thing we do is remove the collider we don't need any colliders because the character controller system uses its own logical system for collisions the cube itself we're going to make two in height and um, let's leave the rest as is now you can see he's going through the ground especially when you look at our player point here so that's the pivot point our cube needs to be standing at that point so move him up by one and you can see now that his pivot point well he's actually standing directly at our pivot point place that cube now into our player so he's now parented to the player there's no collisions coming from the cube because he's just a mesh let's add a material to him there we go nice and beautiful now in front of him we can see the front area in fact what I'm going to do is duplicate him drop it down to about 0.5 scale it down to 1 whoops 1 and you can see by the outlines that it matches the character there a little bit scale his sides out to 1.1 and now we have some pants yes we're gonna have a QB looking character duplicate that once more place it in front scale it down let's say 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 place it in front here so we probably need him at 0 0.5 in fact I'm going to scale it up a little bit more to 0 0.2 0 0.3 minus uh, let's say 0 0.1 nope 0 0.2 and go up to about 1.6 there we go duplicate it once more and boom we now have some eyes we need another material add that to both set its color to a nice black and let's give it a bit of shine as well there we go nice and shiny cubes in front of our character let's give him a more skin color sort of look just there make it more peachy there we go we now have a character with a nice skin tone <laughs> it's cool there we go we have a nice cool looking character no modeling required just a bunch of cubes and no colli colliders on them so there's no collisions happening from any of these objects here the player itself is the thing that's going to handle all our collisions and all our scripting so we're going to add firstly the character controller itself here we are and you can see here that that adds itself a collision shape which is of course the shape of a capsule character controllers are always a capsule shape we need to move this up so that it matches our player because of course it likes to have its center at our pivot point which we don't want move it up by one and you can see now that our capsule is now matching our character exactly as we know from looking at the physics settings where our gravity is set and this is for rigid body physics to 9.81 we 
We know in real world physics that we have 9.81 meters per second squared for gravity. So that would mean that unity's units are actually one unit per real world meter. That's what we expect to, to work in. And that's very useful because that's what we work in in physics. Which means now that we have a character controller that has a height of two, our object is exactly two meters tall, which is pretty standard for a human. Well, I mean, I'm actually 1.6 meters. And you'll probably notice that from any of my VR videos, because I like to set things up with ap appropriate scale in them as well. And that's very useful because now we're working with real world units. This is a character who's exactly two meters tall or two units tall. So whenever we create doors or gaps for our character to move through, they can be at least two, meet two meters tall or two units tall and our character can get through them. The same for enemy, enemy controllers, for enemy characters, sorry. If they're larger than that size, we know how big they are relative to our player. They could be double the size, we set them to four. Very useful. What we want to do here is grab our player object. I'm going to swap him around so that he's facing behind. There we go. So now we can see our character. In fact, I'm going to switch off shadows for the two cubes here that handle his eyes. So we go up here, cast shadows, off. Ta-da! He now has no shadow for his eyes. Very useful because now he looks a little neater. And we can get over to scripting.